you know, the topic which would make the military uh, look like it was really taking care of its people, make it look like it was really taking care of, of, um, of coalition troops, and, uh, you know, make it look like it was really uh, accomplishing something, uh, you know, either in Iraq, Afghanistan, or, or any place in the world that I served. I, I had the very unique experience of, of spending more than four and a half years overseas. Um, did, you know, did you raise that story, Mathis, with your editor? Did you say? Absolutely, I did. Yes, I did. I raised it, and I told him I thought it was terrible, and, I, and it actually, it actually, that experience kind of affected me, uh, uh, very much affected me for, for a while, and, it, and uh, you know, it, it came less than a year before I got out of the military, and, and that was, that, that, that one was what put the, the, the nail in the coffin for me. I, I didn't, like, I was disgusted that, that uh, I was being ordered to, to, like I said, produce a story about this guy, to go in and have to interview a man uh, who has had his leg blown off in, in somebody else's war not but, not but a week earlier, and to not be able to report about the fact that when I interviewed him, I was, uh, I was in full uh, protective gear because this young man had contracted a bacteria from the sands of Afghanistan that, was, that is spreading pretty rampantly, or at least at the time was, through army hospitals all over the world. And uh, he was inside an isolation chamber where, you know, all the oxygen was flowing in rather than out to try and keep his, his bacteria contained. And uh, What was the it, bacteria? I, it, I believe it started with an A. I'm not a doctor, but it was something like acetobacteria or something like that. And I, you I didn't describe what he looked Absolutely like, where not. he was? Well, I took, I, I took a couple of photos of him. Um, you know, those are still out around on, online. And did but, the military uh, newspaper run the photos? It was, I, it was posted on a website. Uh, it was released on a military newswire. As well, uh, it was published in U.S. Army Europe's Quarterly Magazine, which I helped to, uh, you know, shoot for, write, edit, and produce uh, Your Army Magazine. You just no, couldn't I explain didn't, I didn't report, why I didn't he was in on the bacteria. Uh -huh. You just couldn't explain why he was in that isolation chamber. Well, I knew why he was in that isolation chamber, but the fact is, uh, for us to be broadcasting to the world, uh, you know, however necessary it may be, that we have a Romanian soldier here that's in isolation, not but a week after, uh, you know, having his leg blown off because, uh, you know, he's got a bacteria that's that's spreading throughout all kinds of army hospitals, uh, you know, that, that does not paint the rosy picture that, that the military requires uh, most of its journalists to paint. And what and, did your uh, editor say when you asked if you could cover the U.S. soldiers um, like the one who had his arms and legs blown off? Well, I didn't ask could I. I asked why we, why we didn't, why we wouldn't. And she said it's not in line with our, our, with our strategic goals. We had, uh, we had a strategy map uh, for U.S. Army Europe, a command information strategy map, which outlined about seven or eight uh, different points that we wanted to be advertising to the world and to our soldiers. And, um, and I believe while one of them was, was um, you know, uh, talk about talk about uh, you know, U.S. Army Europe health care and, and, and why it's, it's so good and so top-notch. But one of, the, one of the main strategic goals of working for that, for that magazine was to foster positive relationships between uh, the U.S. military and militaries of emerging allies in the East, such as you know, Romania or Poland. Uh, all, you know, all of these, all of these um, former bloc states and just eastern states that are now contributing troops to uh, efforts at both in Iraq and Afghanistan. Sergeant Mathashiro, um, we only have 50 seconds left on the satellite, oh, yes, and I want to ask you what happens to you now. On Sunday, you announced you're not going to report for duty. Are you AWOL? Are you absent without leave? Well, I'm not absent without leave until they tell me I'm absent without leave. Uh, to me, I'm following the U.S. Constitution. I'm upholding the law, and I'm going to continue behaving as such. I refuse to be labeled or be shamed by these actions. I refuse to behave like a like criminal. Um, I am going to stay here in Washington, D.C. until at least Thursday. Uh, I've been here for the past two and a half weeks lobbying members of Congress to come out in official support of resistors to the Iraq occupation for uh, cause of its, its, its uh, you know, 
constitutional nature uh, as well as, as, as being waged in violation of, of international laws and the like. I believe we've made progress, and I believe Thursday, uh, um, I believe members of Congress will be coming out in support of war resistors. Sergeant and, Mathis uh, Chiro, we're going to leave it there, and I want to thank you very much for being with us again as of Sunday. Um, he has publicly announced that he is refusing orders to deploy to Iraq. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report. When we come back, the former presidential candidate will be with us, Mike Gravel. Stay with us.